With the recent launch of Intel's latest Z390 based chipset, as well as the latest generation of 9th gen series processors, I'm sure that there are a lot of you out there that are interested in building a gaming PC for the first time, as well as some of you that might be looking to refresh a gaming PC. In this respect, I think that we've got a great series of boards with our Tough Gaming series. These boards have really been designed from the ground up to offer a great price point, especially for users that are on a little bit lower budget, but doesn't really compromise on not only the core feature set in terms of overclocking capability and functionality, but as well as more gamer-centric features like audio design and networking exploitation. In addition to this, these boards really are tried and true in terms of ASUS quality, where you get boards that are really proven in terms of their reliability and durability. So we've got two boards to highlight for you in this overview, one being a micro ATX and another one being an ATX board. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at these plus gaming and pro gaming SKUs. Starting off, let's first go ahead and talk a little bit about the aesthetics for these boards. These boards feature a bit more of a distinctive aesthetic than you see in, let's say, our Strix series or ROG series of motherboards. They're not monochromatic, but I feel that they work really well in terms of overall having flexibility to fit in just about any type of color theme. When we take a look at the core colors, you've got two colors that are predominantly present on the boards with black, and then our accent color, which is in Tough Gaming Yellow. On the ATX base model, you're gonna have two lighting zones, one being on the side profile of the board, and then another on the actual Tough Gaming logo that's present on the motherboard. On the micro ATX board, Board, it's only going to feature one zone of RGB lighting. Now, both of these boards, though, fully support ASUS Aura Sync support. So that means that if you are still want to go ahead and synchronize them with, let's say, RGB fans, chassis, LED strips, or any number of other type of devices uh, that are not only present within the ASUS Aura Sync ecosystem, but also the Tough Gaming Alliance, you, of course, have full control and synchronization available to you in the utility that you can go ahead and configure within the operating system. Now, in terms of the connectivity, both of them feature two headers in this respect. Now, I noted on the Tough Gaming Alliance, and while this doesn't necessarily represent itself here in terms of the aesthetics, it's an important consideration point because a lot of first time builders that are looking to find a kind of complementary experience in terms of the look and feel of the system, this is already taken care of for you if you're looking at the Tough Gaming Alliance series of compatible products. So whether you're talking about fans, chassis, coolers, memory, or any number of other type of devices, you'll find that they closely resemble the overall look and feel and go really complementary, not only from a physical and overall compatibility aspect, but definitely from an aesthetic perspective. Now, while aesthetics are important in boards, they're not as important as the overall performance that you're gonna expect on a Z390 motherboard, and definitely the overall expectations you have when you drop in, let's say, a 9600K, or any one of the compatible 9th gen series of processors. Now, while these boards are a bit more aggressive in their price point, they definitely don't compromise in still being able to offer you a very solid overclocking experience. We take the performance design very seriously, even on these more entry-level boards. And in this respect, these boards feature a solid VRM design implementation. And what I mean by that is essentially the power componentry on the board. So whether you're talking about the overall inductors or chokes or the overall MOSFETs and drivers, you can feel confident that you've got more than enough power capabilities to be able to ensure that if you're looking to be able to punch up that frequency on something like a 9600K, you're gonna have a safe, stable, and reliable overclocked experience. Now beyond that, we've also gone ahead and carefully evaluated other aspects that tie into, let's say, performance and overclocking experience on these boards. And these uh, are ultimately seen in a couple of different ways. One is going to be the DRAM overclocking experience. We can easily and effectively overclock the board by taking advantage of our easy XMP options, which are inside the UEFI. But also this translates into support for higher frequencies. One of the really big benefits for Z390 and 9th gen series processors is the really impressive memory controller that's built inside the CPU. You might see a lot of new kits that are coming to market that might be in that 3800, 4000, or even 4200 megahertz. And with this generation, these boards do feature our second generation OptiMem technology. And what this is, is essentially is a trace layout design. The traces on the motherboard are essentially signal conduction paths between the CPU socket and the DRAM banks themselves. And what we've done for this generation is essentially optimize how we actually layer the signal paths in different layers of the PCB, as well as with a larger ground plane. What this ultimately translates into is that these boards can readily be able to hit higher frequencies than we saw in the previous generation of the Z370 series of motherboards. So if you're looking to be able to pair up some higher frequency kits like DDR4-4000 or even 4200, if your memory controller can keep up, you can definitely still run those speeds on these series of motherboards. Furthermore, if maybe you're just a first time builder and you haven't necessarily experienced memory teething points, they can definitely sometimes be a challenge amongst figuring out how to get your system up and running. Thankfully, these boards really have a great feature that's really in tune for uh, making performance something easy and more turnkey. 
The flick of a switch on either one of these motherboards helps to enable our MemoK2 technology. And essentially what this does is it monitors how the memory is initializing on your system. And if it detects there's essentially an issue with the memory working correctly, it'll make some subtle low level of changes to be able to help modify things like maybe like the frequency, timing, or voltage to help to ensure that the actual memory will initialize correctly and allow the system to post and allow you to ultimately get back up and running. So whether that requires you maybe updating the UEFI or maybe making a quick memory adjustment or ultimately running maybe a memory test to see if you have a faulty module, the Memo K2 technology in conjunction with the rest of the design work we've done really helps just uh, give you a better experience when it comes to DRAM on any one of these Z390 series of boards. Now last but not least, we've also gone ahead and made some improvements to the actual physical power connections. And these come in the form of our ProCool technology where we're actually physically using a thicker gauge internally in terms of the wiring there. This helps to improve actual output current performance as well as reduce the thermals for that internal wiring. Ultimately what this translates into is just a better overclocking experience. So as you're punching up that frequency for that 9600K, you can feel confident that you're gonna have a stable and reliable experience. This all pairs together with the rest of the design work that we've done, whether that's the a solid VRM, the VRM heatsink design, the OptiMem Trace technology implementation, the MemoK, and our digital power delivery and control options that we have available for tweaking and tuning in the UEFI. All of these ultimately help to give you a great, stable, and reliable overclocking experience and performance already experience on these boards. Now for a lot of you, you're also going to probably have concerns about the overall, I'd say, thermal design in the VRM itself. Now the power components that we've gone ahead and selected, as we noted, are very strong in terms of their overall performance and thermal efficiency. But at the same time, you definitely want to ensure that you've gotten good heat sinks to be able to effectively dissipate uh, from those power components, especially as you're cranking up that frequency. And in this respect, both these boards offer very solid VRM heatsink design. So they both feature a two-stage heatsink, which means that there's two independent heatsinks to help to cover the entirety of the VRM array. They've got multiple fins and a large amount of surface area with multiple leverage points in terms of the way that the heat sinks are finned out and designed to be able to really give you a good amount of surface area so that as air comes in contact, you're readily helping to ensure that you're getting solid dissipation performance. In addition for this generation, we've also gone ahead and improved the way that the actual heat sinks make contact with the VRM assembly. Traditionally with most heat sinks, you're only going to have contact with just what uh, is referred to as the primary power components, the MOSFETs and the drivers. But for this generation, we actually have thermal pads and the heatsink has been designed to make contact not only with the MOSFET and the drivers, but also the inductors. This considerably improves the overall um, heat dissipation performance for the heatsink assembly as it's now making contact with two parts of the VRM and helping to ultimately pull away more heat and have that heat dispersed so that you can maintain a better level of overclocking performance and stability. Now, keeping in the vein of heat sinks, both these boards also feature M.2 heat sinks. This is great because it helps to ensure the best performance possible for your M.2 SSDs, especially the latest generation of PCIe Gen 4 NVMe based SSDs. So if you wanna make sure those drives are not throttling and you can have the best performance possible even under heavy load, these boards got you covered. Now keeping in the theme of cooling, Let's talk a bit about how these actually motherboards help to really provide you as a maybe a first time builder or somebody that's maybe not as knowledgeable about how making sure that you can take care of controlling your fans effectively and efficiently. And both these boards are gonna get you taken care of in this respect by utilizing our Fan Expert 4 technology. So Fan Expert 4 is actually a combination of hardware, and firmware and even software. All these essentially tie in together to really be able to give you an outstanding level of control, granularity, and flexibility in how you connect your fans. So when you're setting up a system, the great thing about it is that it doesn't really matter which headers you plug into here. The board supports both three pin fans and four pin fans. It supports PWM fan splitting, which is great if you got chassis where you might have two or three front intake fans or maybe group fans on your radiator. You can essentially connect a cheap fan splitter cable to one of these headers, set it to PWM output and have multiple fans be controlled by a single header. On top of that, if you just want to click a button inside the UEFI or inside the operating system, you can automatically figure out the minimum and the maximum speeds for all your fans so that if you go ahead and click something like turbo mode, then the fans will ramp up a little bit more dynamically to help to make sure that you get better cooling performance. Or you can click the silent button and all the fans will actually truly go to silent. They'll turn off because we know the minimum and the maximum values for any one of the connected fans. On top of that, if you want to have a little bit more targeted control and really make sure that you're getting the best cooling performance from your system, you can actually have your fans respond to different temperature sources. So if you want to follow the traditional kind of convention, you can have them respond to the CPU temperature. But in most situations, we actually find that systems have the GPU running at a hot, far higher temperature than the CPU. The great thing about these boards is you can just jump in, 
point them to say, I have my front intake fans respond to, let's say, the GPU temperature, so you can get more targeted and precise cooling performance. Again, all these options are available not only within the UEFI, but also within the operating system, really allowing you the most flexibility to allow you to go ahead and dive in and define the controls the way you want them specific to your build. Now moving over from this whole discussion regarding performance and overclocking and cooling, let's talk about something I think a lot of uh, PC DIY gamers can really appreciate and that's going to be improvements in audio and networking. So first up, let's talk a bit about Tough Gaming Audio. For both of these motherboards, they do feature actually a lot of the design similarity that we first pioneered in our much higher end series of Strix and ROG series motherboards. But it's definitely a little bit different. For our Tough Gaming series, we still feature our full isolated audio, which means the section of audio on the motherboard is still independent from the rest of the motherboard. This helps to maximize the performance of that sound. What this really ultimately means is that you help to really mitigate or minimize any type of uh, crackling, hissing, popping, or sometimes noise interference that you get from different components or from other things that are sometimes occurring in terms of the processing of the motherboard. Now, in addition to this, we also have a high quality audio codec, the S1200, which has been custom designed for just these tough gaming boards. It really offers a solid level of performance in terms of its audio playback, as well as also offers improved line level input performance. What that means is if you go ahead and uh, take an analog microphone and plug in uh, to this boards, you're also gonna have a little bit better clarity and a little bit better tonality for that microphone. You've got audio grade capacitors, which help to add a little bit of more richness and warmth to the overall sound stage. A shielded codec, which again helps to protect from any type of interference or uh, interference that might be coming from other components in your system. And beyond that, uh, there's also, I think, a specific focus that we've put into the software suite to really allow you to have a little bit more customization to dial in the audio just the way you want it. Now, how does it ultimately break down? Well, this breaks down in our Tough Gaming Audio Suite, where we've worked with DTS, who actually has custom made different profiles for different types of scenarios. So you can easily go ahead and click a specific, actually, profile that might be a little bit more tuned for, let's say, optimization of certain sound patterns and frequencies in FPS games, as opposed to, let's say, action RPG type games. Now, you also do have a five band equalizer, so that if you wanna go ahead and customize the sound profile a little bit more specific to what you have a preference in, you can easily do that. But all the way around, the improvements that we have here in terms of the audio design really help to give you a great experience, uh, regardless of whether it's gonna be in music, movies, or games. Now, in addition to the improvements and the audio design that we have on these boards, we've also got some pretty cool networking implementations. So first and foremost, it's gonna be just recapping the actual network specs that we got on these boards. We've got an Intel Gigabit Ethernet on both the ATX and the Micro ATX board. Really, the Intel NICs are really the kind of the proven standard in the industry when it comes to their overall performance, their reliability, their management options, and definitely their UDP gaming performance. UDP packets are the most common types of packets which are used in online multiplayer games, and Intel NICs have really shown to have a very solid level of performance when it comes to UDP packets. Now, in addition to this, uh, Wi-Fi has become increasingly more popular, and it's actually in previous generations where tough gaming boards didn't necessarily have Wi-Fi, we actually saw a lot of users were wondering, hey, what about wireless connectivity? And they would generally add in some form of the USB adapter. But many times they were using far subpar types of wireless controllers that would have significantly reduced range, reduced throughput, and wouldn't support many of the more advanced type of technologies that you find in the best wireless chipsets, which really help to give you better overall experience when you're connecting to the latest generation of routers. So for this generation, these tough gaming series of boards really feature actually the absolute best when you talk about Wi-Fi based chipsets. They both features Intel's latest generation 2x2 811 AC wireless chipsets. Some of the really cool technologies that these wireless chipsets support is not only dual band operation, but also 160 megahertz operation. 160 megahertz operation when paired with a compatible router will actually allow the wireless throughput to meet or exceed that of gigabit ethernet cable, which is pretty awesome. Beyond that, we also uh, bundle with these boards our TurboLAN software. TurboLAN is a great and easy packet priority software so that if you wanna go ahead and configure whichever applications or games you're running to be able to receive the immediate prioritization in your system, whether it's gonna be on the wireless connection or whether it's gonna be on the wired connection, just jump into the TurboLand software, go ahead and set whatever app or game you want to receive the priority and you're good to go and you'll get the best network connection experience.
Now for those that are, you might be wondering about, of course, some of the key specifications, these are of course Z390 series motherboards. So that pretty much means all the key technologies that you're probably most interested in these boards are fully gonna cover. Just to quickly recap, of course, you got full support for K series based processors, any of the ninth gen series chips. You're gonna of course have a full support for PCIe Gen 3 by 4. That includes MDME based M.2 SSDs. You're gonna of course have your traditional SATA 6 key ports, which are also on these boards. You have multiple PCIe slots. And with actually one of the boards uh, being that the actual Pro supports SLI configurations, if that's something you're interested in. Beyond that, you also have USB 3.1, uh, both Gen 1 and Gen 2 based implementations on these boards, with the actual Pro also featuring a USB 3.1 Gen 2 header with the latest generation of chassis. In addition to that, you also, of course, have Type-C and Type-A connectivity on the Pro, while you maintain full Type-A connectivity on the Plus model. Beyond that, all the other headers that you really would be expecting for any type of modern build are going to be present on both these ports. So wrapping things up, we've talked about a lot of different aspects when it comes to these tough gaming series of motherboards, and I think it's pretty easy to see that if you're a first-time builder or somebody that's looking to be able to take advantage of these boards and the solid features that they offer for a new refresh update based on these 9th gen series processors and the Z390 chipset, these boards are definitely not going to let you down. While they're definitely a little bit more aggressively priced, you still get a solid foundation at being able to enable a great overclocking experience, especially for that 9600K series of processor, along with still getting improvements in audio networking and really solid and robust fan control and connectivity options on these boards. In addition to this, there's also a wide range of supplemental options that we offer within our firmware to really help to offer a lot of you users, I think, a better experience when it comes to building and maintaining your system. Some of these options include things like our Easy Flash 3 technology, which allow for out-of-the-box updating just by connecting an Ethernet port and going into the Easy Flash menu to be able to get the latest and greatest BIOS when you're first setting up your build. Quick and easy, my favorite options inside the UEFI so you don't have to dive in into the UEFI for all these different options that you might not be aware of, as well as a number of different wizards to allow you to easily and effectively do things like RAID configurations, simplified overclocking, and much more. With all this, I definitely think it's pretty easy to see that the tough gaming series of motherboards really offer you a great foundation for building your next Z390-based gaming build.